I'm DJ Premier, and I present to you, So What's Up. Okay, computer. Run it back. So what's up? July 2nd, 1996, a sophomore album was born. Sophomore meaning second, like high school, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, first, second, third, fourth, all right? This is the follow-up to the most incredibly classic Illmatic album, which is actually now inducted and filed in the Library of Congress. That's when you know things are being done. Shout to Nas. But now we're gonna go to the 25th anniversary of this album. Actually, I got the 25th anniversary shirt. It was written was the album. Yeah, peep the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, flexing on all that. Yeah, we'll show you the whole shirt later. But in the meantime, I uh, got some songs on that album as well. And Nas enlisted me to do some production again. First song, actually, I'm gonna back up like I always do. Let's show you what song we're gonna talk about. Because the disc is a little different before it turned into what it turned into. At the time, Nas told me on this album, I wanna do a song where I'm like a gun. I don't have it all down yet, but I wanna do something where like I'm a gun and how I'm being treated, used in bad ways, and this, that, and the third, and I, you know, I gotta figure out if I'm a narrator, I'ma just figure it out. I said, all right, let me make a, a template. So I started to write it out until we got to that stage. So at the temporary time, it was called Gun. But if you turn this sideways, it actually says I gave you power. If you look deep enough, it says I gave you power. You see that? But originally it was called Gun. So now, Nas starts contemplating on how he's gonna make this thing be what it is. The crazy thing about it was, while he's contemplating how he's gonna structure this song, cause I don't have the beat done yet, all I have is a drum pattern. He says, oh, by the way, I want to do New York State of Mind Part 2. And I'm like, oh, nah. Certain classics, you just don't touch them. Just like movies, Beverly Hills Cop, Beverly Hills Cop 2, Beverly Hills Cop 3. 3, ugh. 1 and 2 was all right. Uh, so, stuff like that. Lethal Weapon, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Could have stopped at 3. And other movies, Godfather, 1, 2, 3. Could have stopped at 2, but... Finally got into three later as I just watched it and watched it again, but still one or two, we would have been fine. Just like New York State of Mind Part Two, but we really, really, really pulled it off to follow up to the original. We'll get to that story on another time when that floppy disk appears, but back to this. Nas wanted to find a way to transition from Street Dreams, which is the song before I Gave You Power, into the song. So he said, at the end of Street Dreams, Let's connect it where there's a shooting or something. The guys are bragging about how they shot somebody and they toss the gun. And once they toss it, someone else picks it up and then the gun starts to speak in Nas' voice of what the situation is. So with that said, here is how the intro started from the industry dreams into the song. I love this build up. Check it out. Yeah, nigga, what? Boy, what? Yo, what? Yo, 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 come on, let's get that in, yo. Son, look, we on his back right now. Yo, we gotta get up out of here, son. Come on, nigga, come on. Yo, come on, run, yo. Yo, watch out, man. Yo, watch out, watch out. Yo, yo, son, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yo, I twisted that kid right now. Yo, 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 yo come on, though. Oh, shit. Yo, we gotta get yo, up out of here, yo. yo. You think somebody peeped that? Yo, hell yeah. I'm saying, yo, as long as we get rid of, get rid of the heat, yo. Fuck that. Get rid of that heat, yo. Cash got a song. Come on, I threw that shit. Gotta come bounce, on. yo. And uh, shout to Showbiz, who was actually there again at a session to watch this go down. It was just crazy because he's sitting there wondering how is he gonna start the vibe before the rhyme. And if you hear the beginning part, that was actually how the song started before the rhymes even took place. And actually, you know what? Let's play the intro, because that's all we had before the lyrics were written out. And this is, you can tell he just did it off the, off the head. Check this out. Damn. Look how motherfuckers use a nigga. Just use me for whatever the fuck they want. 
I don't get to say shit. Just grab me, just do what the fuck they want, sell me, throw me away. Niggas just don't give a fuck about a nigga like me, right? Like I'm a, I'm a gun. Shit. It's like I'm a motherfucking gun. I can't believe this shit. Now, by the time we got to the beat stage of it, aside from the drums, and I, and I said, it's gotta be a sad piano. That's again, thoughts that just ran through my head. It's gotta be a sad piano that doesn't overdo your lane and open part to put the lyrics down so we can hear you explain how you're gonna be a gun and how a gun thinks as like if it was a human being. You know what I'm saying? And I remember I said, it's got to fade up. The music's got to fade up while you're still talking about, man, I can't believe this, I'm a gun. And that's when we started to just gel ideas and I found a dope piano that, that, I, that I looped. And once it got to that stage, I knew this was going to be one of the most memorable records ever done with a MC like Nas being able to turn a gun into a, a thinking weapon of how it feels to be misused as, you know, what, what it's, for what it's supposed to be used for. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, from the bullets to the, the clips to the, the you know, the, the way you cock it back, even the hook is about how it's cocked back and what it does when the gun is executed to, to do harm or any type of situation that it's being used for. So, again, the sounds are contained on these floppy disks. You see how thin it is? Thinner than a waffle. These things contain the sounds of all the stuff you hear in my career of my 90s era from putting down tracks to make these songs for artists to make their records and uh, document all this dope piece of work. And what we do is I use the weapon of choice which is called the Akai S950 Sampler. That machine is what's this stored data is run through, and then we connect it to a drum machine that is linked to it through what you call MIDI. MIDI cables make these, these devices speak to each other. The triggering device was the Akai MPC-60, and I sometimes use the MPC-62. Shout to Roger Lynn, a big part of the MPC era before he removed himself from it. So shout to Roger Lynn, shout to the Lynn drum as well. All right, if you know, you know. Real hip hop, early days, classic stuff. Now, with that said, this stuff was then recorded on two inch tape, no digital, we weren't even at that stage yet. Everything was on two inch tape. These things weighed almost 10 pounds and you had to buy at least maybe five or six of them at almost $110, $120. If you bought it at a studio, they would charge you like $175 to $200 because you had a, didn't have a store to go to. But in our era, we would just buy stock from tape companies and hauling those things ain't easy. They, some of them have handles, some of them don't. But that's how we were able to put songs on, on these, these classic albums. And the crazy thing is, they only hold about three songs each. So say if you're doing 10, 15 songs, it's a lot of reels and a lot of money, you know, all right? So that that era is so classic and it's the purest sound that you get on tape versus digital where things are not as heavy unless you know what you're doing with engineering and ears, but we know that. That's the reason why these classics are being spoke on to this day. Now with this, all I remember is Nas is sitting there writing it out, and then when he started to say, let me do the first verse, I got the idea down, let me just practice it, he nailed it in one take of his whole entire fucking just idea. And then when he went to the second verse to talk about the serial number being scratched off, and he even made a serial number up. It was just, it was just astronomical to see a dude just completely create past the Illmatic stage because a lot of times when artists do their follow-up album, they don't sell as much and sometimes the pressure's on so much that you, you struggle to really make another follow-up tight, serious album that you could say he's still on his way. 
but Nas didn't do that. It was written, was just as good of, as a follow-up. Shout to Havoc, who was also one of the producers on there, you know what I'm saying, and he's, he's QB. And uh, it was the first time he did a, a single that was more crossover with Miss Lauren Hill of the Fugees with uh, If I Ruled the World, which was actually his lead single. So with that going as his first lead single, he still kept it true to the streets when he came with this right here. And again, it may have been called Gun in the Beginning, but then it was called I Gave You Power, as you can see. And now, when you insert this disc, one of the illest records to ever, ever come out, whether I did it or not, I was very, very amazed at Nas's poetry and his lyrical creativity. And it was so precise and to the point of what a gun would feel like if it could talk, besides just popping off like that when you pull the trigger. And again, it's time to load it up to the S950 and then connect it to the pads on the MPC 60 and, or 62 and then when you press that play button this is what you get I seen some cold nights and bloody days They grab me bullet spray They use me wrong so I sing this song to this day My body is cold still for real I was made to kill That's why they keep me concealed Under car seats they sneak me in clubs Been in the hands of mad thugs They feed me when they load me with mad slugs Seventeen precisely, one in my head They call me Desert Eagle Send me auto with lead I'm seven inches, four pounds Been through so many towns Ohio to Little Rock to Canarsie Living harshly, beat up and battered they pulled me out, I watched his niggas scattered Making me kill, but what I feel, it never mattered One thing that was ill about this album It still had another star-studded cast just like Illmatic This one contained Dr. Dre For the first time doing a Nas record that, Which then led to the Firm album being put out there With Dr. Dre at the boards So, Havoc from Mob Deep Track masters, Tone and Poke Polk used to be Chub Rock's DJ When I toured with EPMD, DJ Quick Father MC and Gangstar. And also, let's not forget the other producers on there. LES, QB, he did Life's a Bitch on Illmatic and made his debut in, on the scene. And he's also on this album. Also, Live Squad produced on there. Rest in peace to Big Stretch. Love you, bro. And also, let's not forget, there was also Rashad Smith. So it was star studded and it was very, very, very well received. And again, salute to Nas, salute to my man Jungle, his brother, salute to the whole QB Queens Bridge, and salute the floppy disc. And that's what's up. Heard mad niggas screaming, niggas running, cops is coming. Now I'm happy until I felt somebody else grabbing. Damn.